So once every so often there's a game that comes out that's just really really bad and I decide not to upload any gameplay footage of it on my channel. And then some days there's some games that are just so bad that I feel I have some type of compulsion just to upload a bit of gameplay footage because of how ridiculously bad and just how much of a parody of itself it really could be. And this is one of those games it's called Damage Inc Pacific Squadron World War 2 and after all it's kind of obvious that we are a fighter pilot and after all we are American fighting the uh, Japs in the Pacific so hopefully we'll also be defending Australia or whatever but this is only gonna be a little let's try or whatever I feel like I'm the only person in the world that knows that this game is this game has come out uh, there's not too much hype and no hype at all and it's created by or published by Mad Cats who are pretty prominent in the controller market but anyway Let's go ahead and a start a campaign, which is going to be doing like the first mission or two right now. I won't be doing any more carrying on missions because this is just really ridiculous. I just want to have a little bit of fun. So we don't want to do David for infamy. Infamy, we want to do Pearl Harbor because that's just a little intro. So it's not like we're actually defending or anything like that. We're just going ahead with a tutorial shooting down. Uh, what are we shooting down? We're shooting down like air balloons or whatever. And this is the first little problem. It took me like so long to realize which um, selection I had because like no, you usually think that the white, like the bright white text would seem symbolize that's what you have selected and it's actually yes that we have selected the things that's like glowing. So like at first I was clicking no and I was like what the hell is happening? But uh, we have it on yes so whatever. I don't know where to start so I'll start at the beginning. Pa was a farmer when Jimmy and I were growing up. We lived out in Oklahoma, and we'd sit out front listening to Pa's stories about how the grass grew taller than his head when he first started farming. He'd tell how every year the rain followed the plow, and the crops grew tall and strong. And then, one year, the rains didn't come and the harvest failed. The next year, Pa took to the plow and cut through the packed dirt, getting ready for the rains. But again, the rain didn't come, and it didn't come the year after or the year after that. And then the winds came blowing from the west. They blew in fast and stole the soil. They carried it off, and they took Pa's living with them. We moved from the farms to the city, and Pa found what work he could. But there were millions of Okies like us, and never enough work to go around. In 33, FDR arrived in Washington, promising a new deal to get people back to work. But by the end of the 30s, there were more dark clouds on the horizon. Over in Europe, Adolf Hitler promised the German people that they were different, that they were the chosen race, and it was their time. Back home, there were suddenly jobs to be had. Jobs in factories, jobs in the Navy, jobs in the Army, and jobs in the Air Force. Jimmy and I signed up for the Navy. Me as a pilot, Jimmy as a Marine. Before I knew it, I had a job and a wife and a family on the way. After flight training, we were assigned to a squadron on Pearl Harbor half a world away from home. The world around us was in turmoil. There was war in Europe, there was war in the Pacific. We stayed isolated and safe and happy. It's not our war, they said. We didn't start it, and besides, we've got our own problems. It wasn't our war when Poland was torn apart by the Germans and the commies. It wasn't our war when the Japs rolled into China. It wasn't our war when the Germans smashed through Norway, Denmark, and Belgium and marched down the Champs-Élysées in Paris. In 41, things kept getting worse in the Pacific. The Japs wouldn't budge from China, so we cut off their supplies of oil. Without oil, the Japs were doomed, so they did what anyone would do, and carefully and methodically planned for war. On the 7th of December, 1941, the Japanese fleet launched a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. And unfortunately, the game just gets worse after this. That was the best part of the game. And actually, yeah, that's the first time I've watched that. Because I just wanted to hop right into the campaign and just start playing with the sound gameplay. <laughs> but these are the graphics. Welcome to, Welcome to reality. Here. Thanks, Control. I'll be running you through your basic maneuvers today. We've got a lot to get through, so let's make this snappy. I'm good to go. Let's do this. Indeed. I don't want to make my eyeballs bleed anymore, but... <laughs> The actual cutscene was pretty good. I give kudos to the guys that created that. Definitely some animation experts on that. Once you get some speed, pull up to get airborne. Well done. Apparently you at least know the basics of flight. Let's see if you can actually handle your plane now. We'll get you to fly over some of the locations around Pearl. Start with the sink back building. 
go. Give it a fly. All right. So as you can see, the clouds. You can literally see the pixels of the clouds, like on your screen. Like I'll render this out in the in the best 720p quality that I possibly can. And uh, it's not my render settings that just look so bad. And it's the game actually does lag in some sections as well, which is just even that much more embarrassing. It actually lagged up on me on the demo. There's a demo on this for Xbox Live, so this game does lag in the demo as well when the game's installed on your hard drive. So that says something about it anyway. But what did I expect? I love these types of games anyway, so it's all good for me, but for the most most type of people, it's uh, probably Hopefully not the best investment. Head to the Hickam Barracks next. Get nice and low. Give the grunts something to cheer about. Nice and low, so we can cheer on the Americans. See how low we can go. Well, that's definitely too low for comfort. That'll give them a nice wake-up call to go with their breakfast. Let's see you up close now. Give us a flyby of the Ford Island Control Tower. Alrighty, so it seems like that guy that's uh, stalking us, wherever we are, is in that little flat tower, all the way over there. This game also has a nice little mechanic where you can speed up like this, and like everything goes like, into super fast mode. Ah! There we go, give us a wave. Okay, one more. Head over to Battleship Row and do a fly through. Right, we are, we just passed Battleship Row, we're just going to make sure we aren't too high. There we go, there it is. I like the little uh, super fast mode that you press your thumbstick in and everything goes super fast so you can just get from point A to point B a Every lot quicker than usual. Shown you can do the simple stuff. Time for something a little more practical. Right. Weapons testing. We've got some rusted old jeeps that have been cluttering up the east road for months. Your guns should make short work of them. So, head over there and clear the road, if you can. I think I can manage that control. One thing that this game is missing is like a free fly mode. If there was a free fly mode, I would love it. I just like want to pretend I'm a real pilot, flight simulator style, without uh, the scariness involved as flight sim. I'm absolutely petrified of flying a plane on flight sim because I'm just too scared of crashing. Bad childhood memories when I was really young. And there's also like this slow down time mode so you can, uh, everything goes super slow mode, including the sound as well. You can hear like your plane racketing along, but uh, it's also a lot easier to shoot as you can see. Uh, wherever the uh, reticle turns like into an orange type color, it means uh, Jeep you're hovering over an enemy or some jeeps or whatever you want to kill. So, this is truly riveting. Anyway, let's go ahead and just draw these jeeps wherever they are. Let's... Come on, is it going to explode? There we go. There goes another Three, jeep. Three, four. Oh, that was pretty quick in uh, two in quick succession. But I can't get over how bad those clouds look. <laughs> It's really, really embarrassing. And we've got two more. And I can't even see them because of how blurry it is. There we go, one down. Road is clear, control. Good. The tourists will be eternally grateful. Now, the radar station to the east is requesting assistance in running diagnostics on their new equipment. We need you to fly in range of them so you can test their readings. This is a good chance to test out your plane's war speed function. Try it out. You can use it to get over there more quickly. Mm, so they call this little feature I was just talking about war speed as we go into the pixelated clouds of pixelness. Let's go straight down. Any any good uh, flight simulator type of game, any game where you have airplanes, I just love going to the going to the top. I'm sure everyone does this as well. Just go to the very top, see how far you can fly. As you can see, we've reached like 10,000 feet, and it was still going up because, like, we just passed the clouds. So it seems like we're going up, but the distance altitude meter doesn't really indicate that. But anyway, let's go straight down as fast as we can, which we're not really flying that much faster than I thought we would be. Anyway, let's go over here. I think we're supposed to go down into this canyon. Let's just try not to hit anything at least. Control, I am at the radar station. Confirm, Reaper Leader. The radar crew are reporting accurate readings. Time for more target practice, Reaper Leader. We've launched some dummy balloons for you to get some air-to-air -air practice. Shoot them all down as you fly back to Pearl. Look at those high-definition textures. Don't you just wish you were in that balloon? So lifelike. Do they at least shoot back control? Nope, we saved the combat balloons for Ooh. real pilots. Ooh. Very funny, Control. 
Make it quick if you can. I haven't had my breakfast. That was a bit harsh. Under a real pilot. I guess uh, Pops was a, well. Pops is doing it tough back in the farm. Anyway, we are way too far to shoot that balloon yet. Let's keep on flying. Let's use our war speed mode. Okay, as you can see, we're like 600 knots an hour. Wow, we're just rocketing past. All right, there we go. We're well in range now. That's the first balloon down, Control. At least the aiming is a bit too, isn't too difficult, but. I uh, suppose this game is supposed to shine in the multiplayer, which I really don't believe. The graphics looks absolutely atrocious, and it's pretty much like every other flying simulator, or maybe not flying simulator, but it's a flying war game type of uh, experience that you get on a console. It's just uh, nothing too special. You just use the basic controls and you shoot stuff down. Some planes have bombs, some don't. Another balloon nothing bomb. really too extraordinary in this, to be honest. Nothing. Uh, groundbreaking in the terms of gameplay so there's nothing really too much to be uh, happy about with this game to be honest but uh, I sort of do enjoy it though just flying about and uh, being an idiot like flying as close as I possibly can to the ground is great fun especially when you're uh, near the ocean let's just go ahead and shoot these uh, rest of these balloons nice we didn't have to use the zoom in mode then <laughs> but flying as close as you possibly can to the ground is always very nice just trying to challenge yourself and uh, trying not to die, but I don't want to die right now because I don't know where the last checkpoint was. But let's go a pair and uh, let's go right. Let's see if we can get down to like 30 feet. Oh, 18 feet. <laughs> right, there's that balloon. So, oh no. <laughs> Balloons cleared. Control. Good. Hope it wasn't too nope. tough for you. Piece of cake. But now we've actually got a real task for you, Reaper Leader. We've had reports of a grounded mini sub off the coast. Based on the reports, we think it might be Japanese. We need you to find it and confirm the location. Understood, Control. On my way now. There's goddamn Japanese in their mini subs. There are a couple of uh, Japanese mini subs found in Sydney back in the day. Like only actually not back in the day, but a couple of years ago from uh, World War II, which is quite scary that Japan brought in their mini subs. I think they were just like to spy and stuff. But that's pretty extraordinary. Like mini subs, just so amazing to At me. The first location now, Control. No signs of movement. Proceed, Reaper Leader. Continue to the next location. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely there. I can even see it sort of glinting about. Or is it? It's just, it seems like it's some type of graphical glitch. Whatever the hell that thing is. Spotted it, Control. It's just ahead. Fly close to it to perform a recon pass, Reaper Leader. All right, how close do you want to Overflying now, Control. Definitely looks to be Japanese. Hmm, yes, yes. We can definitely, uh tell that it's Japanese just from looking at it, right? Got no idea how we can now uh, tell that, but uh, you'd think that most submarines look uh, pretty much the same from up top. Then again, I'm no military expert. And here we go again. Oh, God. Almost hit it. Fine, Reaper Leader. We'll send out a team to deal with The brass are on end with that Jav sub snooping around, so we better get you back on the ground. We'll get you to land at Hickam Field. Make your way over there now. Now, we'd like that Warhawk back in one piece, so make sure you follow your basic landing fundamentals. First, line her up nice and straight. Give yourself plenty of distance. Second, come in at a nice shallow angle. Too steep, and we'll be pulling you out of a crater. And last, bring her in nice and slow. Too fast, and you'll bounce right off. You're coming in too fast. I'm slow hot. down. I'm sinking down. <laughs> Look at that stop. You just stopped for right away. How are we going too fast? Beauty. Nice sailing, Captain. That wasn't so hard, Control. We're down. Nice flying today, Reaper Leader. We might yet make a real pilot out of you. Now get yourself turned in. Debriefing is in 30 minutes. Yes, yeah, so we're not a real pilot yet, but we're going into warfare in the very next mission. So explain to me how that works out. Gun accuracy 52%. I guess I was shooting like in midair and doing pretty much nothing, but mission time was eight minutes. Let's go ahead and into the second mission, just show you a bit of how the warfare works. It's nothing too exciting. It's pretty much like every other game uh, that's pretty much the same. So, Dave, in for me. Reaper Leader, we are under attack. We've got sightings of Jap planes and reports of bombing attacks from all over the island. The Japs have launched a surprise attack, and they're hitting us with everything they've got. Get your plane in the air and do whatever you can to protect Pearl Harbor. Good luck, pilot. And God help mm. us all. God help us all. Captain. Alright, which plane do we go for? I guess we can only go for the P-40D Warhawk Fighter. 
The Warhawk was built in huge numbers during World War II. By avoiding turn fights, Warhawk pilots could successfully take on Japanese planes. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, launch this mission. If only like we could go ahead and uh, defend Darwin or something like that, do a bit of uh, some Australian defensive warplane fighting, that would be really, really cool. I guess those are the Japanese launching their attack. Yep, definitely is. Get your bird in the air, Reaper Leader. We've got zeros everywhere. Well, not anymore. We're going to take them all down if uh, they don't shoot. Oh, God, there's some like, go, kamikaze go, go. guys. Oh, God. Good. It's like one of those, they're trying to make, recreate like one of those epic cutscenes where we uh, get bombarded from all four corners of the uh, of our side. Alright, so here we go. That little dot symbolizes where we are meant to aim because after all the enemies are flying here. They're not like balloons that are just stationary. So we need to shoot where that little dot is and uh, that guy's down. Oh, we shot the wrong guy. That's a bit embarrassing. Okay, so a yellow board around the target indicator indicates or denotes an enemy. So we need to shoot all the way out there because that guy is flying towards his left. I'm not really sure if uh, on planes they have special like codes, code names for each side like starboard and everything like they do on ships. But anyway, let's go ahead and uh, attack this guy. He seems to be coming right at us. So we're going to... Oh god, he is coming right at us. Yeah, he's gone. Target is toast. It's so easy with the slow mode down, slow mode down time as well. All you have to do is just start slow time down a little bit, wait until they come close to you and just aim at that red little dot. And hey presto! And there's no real tip. actually there are difficulty settings, sorry. I think I'm playing on normal though, which is a bit of a uh, increase in difficulty for me, but to be honest, that's pretty much all the game consists. I don't want to bore you guys too much, but I just wanted to upload a, another video because it's been quite a while since I uploaded, at least for me. I usually like to upload at least once a day, but I took a day off from my uh, regular set schedule. Schedule. God damn. <laughs> down that Is that it? No, we still got lots of these yellow guys. Ah, oh, god damn it. I wonder what happened like if we uh, lose on purpose. Like what happens is like if all the warhawks die, because after all, we aren't meant to be defending them this mission. All our allies. Yep, yep, that guy's gone. So yeah, I could imagine this pretty much being every single mission I don't, don't think there'd be really too much in here. There'd be about, uh, I'd say, 10 to 12 missions that just involve doing the same thing over and over again with the different planes. Maybe they'd chuck in uh, one or two missions where you have to destroy. We lost uh, war, be a bomber. Like, uh, just fly over some uh, targets and bomb away. Which isn't going to be too much exciting. Just do something a little bit different. Foggy down, control. Expand the uh, horizons of the game, and uh, that's pretty much it. But there is definitely a demo, as I just mentioned before. So if you're interested, then I definitely recommend checking the demo out. But uh, I'd give this a miss. It's also available on PC, and I'm sure on PS3 as well. But with that being said, we'll probably just go ahead and end this mission or episode right about now, and. Uh, We'll do that by going out in style, by crashing down. Actually, let's go flying it as close as we possibly can to the ground. Let's try to get in uh, a bit closer. Down into the teens of uh, feet. Well, 50, no, we want to go way closer. 50, 30, 30, nice. Come on, go, go down. Here we go. Oh, we were at 14, nice. Let's go once more. It's like I'm bouncing off the ocean. <laughs> okay. This time we're dying for good. I don't care what's going to happen. Go on. Yes. Out with Star, guys. So see you later and thanks for watching.